Hey, in this next section, we want to build upon the Q equals MS delta T equation and start to look at calorimetry type problems. In a calorimetry type problem and a calorimeter as a device, we're going to be able to look at the amount of heat that's being transferred from one object to another and use that to solve for mass specific heat or change in temperature. A calorimeter is a well insulated container that minimizes the amount of heat that is transferred out of the system into the surroundings. For the lab, we're actually just going to use styrofoam cups. Styrofoam cups do a very good job of insulating water that's placed inside those containers so that any heat from the air in the environment is not being transferred to the water or from the water to the air. And calorimeters work by the law of conservation of energy, meaning that the heat lost by the warm object will be equal to the heat gained by the cooler object. Now if you remember the equation Q equals MS delta T remember change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So if something is losing energy this change in temperature will be negative. which means Q will be negative. And if it's gaining energy, delta T is positive, which means Q is positive. Now we're working on the law of conservation energy, so the energy lost has got to be equal to the energy gained. Now when we're losing energy, that Q will be negative. So I'll say negative Q of the warm object will be equal to positive Q of the cold object. And we can set it up that way, which we can break down into more of a formula. If we separate this out, negative MC delta T for the warm object equals MS, or we use S instead of C, you'll see both, delta T for the cold object. Now let's look at some example problems. Suppose at 100 grams of water at 22.4 degrees Celsius, a 75.25 gram sample of aluminum is removed from boiling water that's at a temperature of 99.3 degrees Celsius and quickly placed in the calorimeter. It is uh, stirred until a finer temperature of 32.9 is re reached. What is the specific heat of the aluminum? So this is going to be very similar to the lab that you're going to do. In the lab, you're going to put a set amount of water into their calorimeter, find its initial temperature. Then take a mass of the metal, put it into boiling water. The metal will come to the same temperature as the boiling water. So if the boiling water is 99.3 degrees Celsius, the metal will be 99.3 degrees Celsius. Then you'll place it in the water that's in the calorimeter, a different set of water, and let the water warm up and the metal cool down and use that to find the specific heat of the metal and from that to figure out which metal you are working with. And so in this case, the negative Q of the metal is going to equal to the positive Q of the water. So negative, the mass of the metal, 75.25, Specific heat of the metal, which we're trying to find, change in temperature of the metal. So final, 32.9, minus initial, 99.3, equals the mass of the water, 100.00. Specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the final temperature, 32.9, minus 22.4. So let's multiply out the one side, 32.9 minus 22.4 times 4.184 times 100. On the right side of the equation, we get 4,393.2 joules that have been gained. 32.9 minus 99.3 times negative 75.25 gives us positive 4,996.6 S. 
So divide both sides by 4,996. And we get a specific heat here of 0.879 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, a second example. Okay, problem two. You are very fussy about your bathwater temperature. It has to be exactly 38.0 degrees Celsius. One morning while checking the temperature, you notice that it's 42 degrees Celsius. You plan to cool the 100 kilograms of water to the desired temperature by adding an aluminum ducky, originally at a freezing temperature of negative 24 degrees Celsius. What mass should the aluminum ducky be? And the specific heat of aluminum is 0.9, the density of the water is one gram per milliliter. So in this case, in this case, the Q of the water is what's going to lose heat. Q of the aluminum is what's going to gain heat. So minus M S delta T for the water equals M S delta T for the aluminum. The mass of the water, 100 kilograms. We need to change that to grams, so that would be 100,000 grams. So we multiply by 1,000. And if it's 100,000, if we have a 1 gram per milliliter, so we know that this is 1 milliliter, 100,000 grams. Specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. The change in temperature of the water, we need it to go to a final temperature of 38 from its original temperature of 42. The aluminum, we're looking for its mass. Its specific heat is given as 0 0.900. And we're going to change it to a final temperature of 38 from its original temperature of negative 24. 38 minus a negative 24 gives us positive 62 times 0.9. So on the right side of the equation, we get 55.8 times the mass. The left side of the equation, we get negative 100,000 times 4.184 times 38 minus 42 comes out to 1673600. Let's divide by 55.8. We would need our aluminum ducky to have a mass of 29,992.83 grams. And we can use three significant figures here, because that's the smallest number. So we would have 30,000, which is one significant figure, so we need to put this in scientific notation. 3.00 times 10 to the fourth grams. Or 30 kilogram ducky. Finally, one last example, 20 grams of silver with specific heat of 0.233 at 350 degrees Celsius are mixed with 200 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature? So we know the silver is going to be the one to lose heat here because it starts at the higher temperature. We know the water is going to gain the heat. So minus 20 specific heat, 0.233. Final temperature minus 350 equals 200 times 4.184 times final minus 30. Now let's simplify this a little bit. 20 times 0.233, negative 4.66, T final minus 350. 200 divided by 4.184, or 200 times 4.184, comes out to 
836.8 t final minus 30. I'm going to divide both sides by 4.6, negative 4.66. And I get t final minus 350 equals negative 179.57 t final minus 30. Now I need to distribute. So t final minus 350 equals negative 179.57 t final plus 5,387.12. Add 179.57 to both sides, t final, so I get 180.57 t final. Add 350 to both sides. And I get 5737.12. Divide by 180.57. And I get a final temperature 31.8. Celsius. That temperature should end up between 350 and 30. The reason it's so much closer to 30 is because the water has a much larger mass, 10 times as much mass, and a significantly larger specific heat, meaning it takes significantly more energy to raise one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius.